So uh, my name is Jeremy Adams. I look after the ecosystem, part of the ecosystem team at Dagger. And uh, today we're going to talk about Dagger and specifically Dagger functions and modules. So if you haven't really heard of Dagger before, this I think will help give you an introduction to Dagger itself. If you've used Dagger in the past, uh, maybe with some other technology that we had because we're a rapidly evolving project, you'll get an update today. And if you're really, really keen, you could probably even build a module during the talk. You'll probably do better just you know, right after the talk. And if you want to hang out with us and build, uh, build some Dagger modules, we'd love to do it. It's super fun, and I think you'll find it really easy. So um, I'm going to start off with a little bit of why Dagger to give you some context. And then I'm going to dig into the Dagger approach, which is API first. We'll talk about the core API at the center of the Dagger engine. And then we're going to talk about how you extend that API. It's the whole point of functions and modules. Right? Functions are cool because the minute you write a function, you can call it from the Dagger CLI. So you get a CLI for free. Don't have to implement that. And you also get a library. You can call it from code. So um, that's really, really powerful. And we'll dig into that a little more. And then the way to think of modules, it's just a collection of functions. So one or more functions, you put those in a module. And modules are kind of an abstract thing, right? You can, you can think of a module as a, a reusable component, something that you share. But you can also think of the module as uh, your pipeline. So if you have an existing project, you might create a Dagger module to daggerize that project to implement, build, and test, and lint, and publish, and release, and all those sorts of things. So we'll get into all of those use cases. But first, why Dagger? Now, if any of you here are wondering if this content is going to get too, too crazy, I just want to give you a quick pep talk. You are ready for this. Um, first, raise a hand. Who here would consider themselves a developer? Oh, yeah, we're in the right place. You are ready for this. Who works at all with DevOps? You might be the designated DevOps person in your team. Oh, yeah, you are definitely ready for this talk. Who's ever looked at a Docker file, written a Docker file? Yes, not necessary for this talk, but it will be handy reference. It'll be something that, a kind of a, touch, a touchstone. And trust me, even if you didn't raise your hand, I think you're ready for this. You can handle this talk. Okay. So first off, why Dagger? Well, in every company, your pipelines, whether they're respected or not, whether people really think CICD is something of value in the company, believe me, it is. Because you can't get a feature from a developer's machine out into production and producing value for the company without going through these pipelines. And nowadays, there's more types of pipelines than ever. And they're increasingly valuable. Now, in the early days, Pipelines are simple and pure, and it's really, really easy, and people don't understand how these things could ever be a problem. Well, then here's a GitHub Actions example, right? Simple build and a test. I'm done. This might last you for a while, but pretty soon somebody who maybe raised their hand or someone said, who wants to do DevOps? And everyone else stepped back, right? And maybe that was you, right, who raised your hand earlier. You have to start actually getting some rigor around the process, and so you're like, okay, we're doing this in YAML, but I've got to like actually use the versions of things. I have to be a little more careful about this. Whereas some of your peers who are you know, developing stuff are saying, well, I can't run that YAML stuff on my laptop. And so I, I have to go do it my own way. So I'm going to like pull in tools that work for me and cre create a local environment where I can build and test and lint and all the things I need to do. Now, of course, these things have diverged at this point, right? And guess what? It just gets crazier for the DevOps people because they keep having to add in more tests and more build types and more things. And soon, you know, you find yourself at 1,000, 2,000 lines of YAML, or you might still be on Jenkins and you've got this groovy situation, right? Uh, and you're just like, maybe you can't even barely touch the groovy. We hear this a lot, where there's, you've got the shared library, and if you break it, everything breaks, and so you don't really want to make changes. That's not good for a high throughput pipeline that needs that AI feature this year, right? That doesn't work. So everyone's looking to re-platform and do something different. So, um, but in the meantime, whoever you are, developers, DevOps folks, platform engineers, you get in this push and pray scenario. You can't test it locally 
the same as CI. So what, what's your alternative? You just push to CI, and you know you might be pushing your app up there, or you might be trying to actually work on the pipeline itself. Either way, you got to push it, wait 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is in your organization, maybe five, maybe two if you're really great, but it's still a pain, right? And it's frustrating that you can't test these things locally before you push them. So we have this factory. It's not, it's not in great shape. It needs, it needs some fixing. But luckily, right, we have the technology building blocks out there to do this. We've got these expressive programming languages, type safe languages, things like Golang and Python and TypeScript and others, right? And code is way better than YAML at expressing a lot of that complex flow control that we care about. Like, have you ever tried to write an if else or switch statement or you know, nested for loops in a YAML based tool? Well, it might be some way to work around it, but it's not gonna be pretty and there's not gonna be the same from one platform to the other. So you get really kind of locked in and it's not, not a great situation. Additionally, um, we have containers. We've had them for over a decade now, right? And they're great. They provide a lot of isolation from the host machine and they're built up in layers. So they're really great with caching. We should leverage those as well. And our dev machines, uh, some of them are really, really powerful. And I feel sometimes like I'm using my, my amazing you know, M4. I wish I had an M4. I don't have an M4. But anyway, if, if I did, uh, I, my amazing M4 Mac as like a green screen terminal practically to some other you know, thing in the cloud. I should be leveraging this power that I have locally. So um, with Dagger, the approach is let's go API first. Let's use real code, real languages. And let's support more than one language. Heck, let's shoot for the moon. Let's not just make this a single language silo. Let's make this so that the whole team can collaborate. We can build this platform together. We'll, we'll make it containerized, aggressive caching, and it'll work locally the same as in any CI. So if you want to think of the Docker revolution where we containerized applications right, and made them portable so I could run on my laptop the same as your laptop, the same as in Kubernetes, now with Dagger, we're actually kind of making the pipeline a portable thing. So you're making that factory a portable thing. And that's really powerful because that builds the rest of those artifacts. So think about that dream with me. And here's what we're talking about when we mean API first. You've got a Dagger engine and you've got these SDKs that you use to access it. There's a core API to reason about things like containers and directories full of source code and pulling something in from Git, working with caching some dependencies, secrets, uh, services that you might want to run an integration test against a database, all that sort of stuff, right? And you use these SDKs, again, in these type safe modern languages like Go, like Python, like TypeScript, and a bunch of community ones too. So come and see us if you, there's a, one that's missing here that you really, really want. But there's community ones for Rust, Java, Elixir, .NET, uh, C Sharp, various ones, right? So come and see us if you've got a wish list. Now, this is an example of a function. We finally got to some code here. And this is in TypeScript, and this is Dagger. So this is a build function. And if you, I, I mentioned Docker files earlier. If you look at kind of the bottom part, you'll see where it says dag container from with directory with exposed port, right? Pretty familiar stuff. I think we can all kind of reason about what's happening here. We're building up a container, adding some content, exposing a port, getting ready to serve this up perhaps as a service, right? And you'll see that, that DAG variable in there. You're gonna see more of the DAG, but that's your, that's your Dagger client into the API. So this is literally API first. And we've just, with this function, extended the API. There wasn't a build built into Dagger, but now, using these little composable building blocks, we've made a new thing, and we could make more out of this. So let's go forward. Once you've got this reusable thing, this build function, I can call it from anywhere the same. So on my CLI, say on my laptop, I can call dagger call build, and I'm gonna get that build, whatever it returns, in this case a container, and I can do the same thing on any CI. Jenkins, GitHub Actions, you know, whatever you have out there, you can run this same thing. So the big idea, right, you can run any functions, including ones in the core API, ones that you write like we just did with the build one, or install that someone else wrote on your team or from the community with the Dagger CLI, and you can also access it from code. And you saw us, you know, in that code, we were accessing the API, right? We were actually accessing the API, 
And so you see down there at the bottom, another example of that. Um, and so it's really powerful if you think about it, because by writing a function, I get a free CLI and I get a free library right away without you having to do anything. And if you want to ever dig in and see how something works, try some help. We'll do that in a second here in code. One other thing I want you just to have in your, in your toolbox as we're looking at some of this stuff is this, this pattern of chaining that will show up in the code in the CLI. I think you saw it where we were making a chain with these dot, uh, you know, dot chaining these functions with the, the dot operators. Um, that's a common pattern, and you can do it on the CLI as well. It's an evolving space. We really care about DX a lot at Dagger, but um, you could see on the bottom there, I'm calling from the CLI this web function that gives me a container, and then I'm doing that exposing the port right there and then and actually bringing the service up all in kind of a one-liner. You can use this as a prototyping mechanism, right? As you experiment with something, then you might say, oh, that's cool. I'm gonna take that exposed port thing and then I'm gonna bring that back into my code and have it be part of the function. So just, we like to be able to play and prototype in different ways with things and then ultimately get it in code, get it in version control and roll it out to the whole team. Okay, so let's take a break from the slides and look at some actual code for a second. So I'm gonna jump into my terminal here and I'm inside of a module. It's actually a whole project that was daggerized, but we'll talk a little bit about that later. And uh, this, when you're inside of a module, you can say dagger functions and get the list of functions that are there. So now it, we're being served this menu of build, build env, publish. And this is, if you check out the dagger quick start, it's very similar. I've added a few things, but just for this demo. So let's try dagger call build. Uh, which is one of the options here. So what we're doing right now is we're connecting to the Dagger engine. We say we want to load this module and we want to run the build function and it returns a container. So we're getting this kind of text description back about something that's type container. It's this Nginx container, right? We were building. Okay, well, cool. That's nice. I have a Dagger container. What can I do with that is kind of the question. Well, remember we can change some things. So I could say, oh, cool, let's build it and now Let's run it as a service and then bring it up. And in fact, there's a shorthand I can just say up. So I'm going to say dagger call, give me this container in my hand here, and I'm actually going to bring it up. So what this is going to do is start and kind of run this container for me. And I'm going to be able to actually attach to it. I've got a tunnel here where I can go localhost 80 and boom, I'm inside of this app that I'm serving. I've got my whole cheat sheet here, so I'm ready to do whatever else I want to do from here, right? Um, so then if I go back and I say, okay, that's cool. Um, what, what else can I do? Well, you can actually, in this TUI, you can see me moving around. I can kind of dive in there and, and you can explore in the TUI and get a lot done. And then if you want to, you can also, there's a, a web uh, you, interface here. And again, I can see all my traces in here as well. So this is Dagger Cloud. And again, can be really useful when you're trying to diagnose and troubleshoot things as well. Okay, so we've done that. So let's stop this one. What else can we do? Well, I was saying you can do help at any point. And so this is gonna now tell me, hey, you know what? There was actually an argument on that build function called source. Now, I use a default mechanism that allowed me to just say, just pull in the whole project. But you could, if you wanted to, specify the source to be something totally different. And um, then it also says, well, let's actually play with that. Let's play with that for a second. So I'm going to say the equivalent of what I just did a second ago was I said source dot. That means pull in the local project right here in this directory and then build that. What I could also do is I could build a different version of the project. So over here, I've got this line that I saved for myself. This is, we see the hash is 1C4F. So let's load git log 1C4F. Okay, so this is a point in the history of the project right before we started making some changes, right before we modified the index page to kind of look in its modern, in a form that I've actually paved over at this point but this will give us a nice starting point. Cool, so now like let's 
Let's run that. Oh, and I've got a lot, of, I've got an ambitious thing in there. Let's actually run that. And let's just start out by bringing this service up again. So this is really useful because if I want to point at, say, a pull request on a repo, GitHub, for example, and maybe GitLab as well, has got a URL format I can use to go right to that pull request. And so I could pull that right in. And you notice, so instead of a directory, I used a Git reference because it can be resolved into a directory. I mean, that's a powerful concept you can dig into more. Now, if I look at this site and I hit reload, check it out. I'm here at my default Vite site, which it was way back, in, way back in the day. And like with a PR, I could look into the future. All right, so that's a great example. Let's stop that one really quick. A couple other things that I had on here. Um, again, if I wanna play around, I could say, oh, you know what? There's uh, there's actually a publish method, uh, a publish function that's available. And it look, it'll even tell me I should use the address. So and this is a case where I've got a container and I want to publish it up to a container registry. I'm going to use this ephemeral TTLSH container registry. So now I've just pushed it, right? And so I can now work with that there. One other like super powerful thing I want to show you here is Say, well, let's use this old version. So I built this old version. I'm wondering, hey, what was going on in that thing? Uh, what was happening? In, you know, was the Nginx conf different back then or something? So what I've just done is I've taken that container and I've, I've got a terminal session inside of that container now. So now I can go in here and look around and I could say, oh, can you show me, you know, the Etsy, uh, Nginx, Nginx conf or something? Oh yeah, cool. Oh yeah, that, that worker connections number, that, that was the problem. Yeah, we shouldn't have changed that, you know, or whatever it is. So it gives you, again, a way to do that kind of debugging, which can be really, really handy. Cool, all right, so let me go to my cheat sheets here. If there's anything else I wanna do right now. All right, so I think we've done some fun stuff. Let's go back to the presentation. Is anybody feeling like they want to follow along in the quick start right now? Uh, I see a couple of hands in the way back that no one else can see, um, which is very uh, advantageous for my presentation. Thank you for doing that. So um, to do that, what I want to do is I'm going to give you all a QR code to play with. Okay. So this is another module that I wrote just for fun. It's called the QR module. And, um, and this should give you hopefully a QR code that will take you to, let's see, I got some people trying it. Let's see. Does it take you to the docs quick start? Yes? Oh, sweet. Okay, okay. That was the idea. So, um, well, okay, we got some, we got some personal uh, information up here. So uh, it's my, my Bitcoin wallet or something. So anyway, um, so this is, uh, you know, this was like fun to do, but, uh, you know, and, and this guy will maybe show himself a little bit later in the program. But, um, but what I thought was really interesting, you notice how I called this. So I called this from inside the module, just like I did in the last one. I was in a module, it's got functions in it, and I called it from there, from that context. The one other thing that I can do that I want to show you is, remember how we, as a directory, we pulled in something from GitHub? I can, all the modules that I'm using are either local or they're in Git, some Git server. We support pretty much all of them. And so I can even do something like this Let's actually get rid of this stuff. And actually, let's not even do it in the same directory. I don't want to even have anyone say, oh, you did it, and then the module is still there, and no, 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 the module's not here. I'm just in some random directory. And so what I'm doing now is I'm saying, hey, Dagger, don't get the module from the current directory. Get the module from, in this case, get the module from GitHub. Actually, go get it, pull it in, run the code, and output it, right? So this is like, and you can kind of see here, if I go there, there's actually a module here. This is, this is this module I wrote that happens to be in Python, but it could be in Go, it could be TypeScript, whatever. Anyway, so it just gives you a little bit of a flavor of what's possible. Okay, so like diving back in really quick. The other thing that's really helpful is to have, you see I'm in this inner loop, and as I run things, the, the caching is making things faster. What, how much time does that say in the back? Can anybody read that? Five, Five more minutes? Okay, cool, cool, cool. 
So the other thing I want to highlight is this fast inner loop. And so, for example, if I'm in this kind of a situation here, I'm going to run dagger call build. This is the same project, but maybe just like a, something happened. You know, somebody made a change. And it says here, PMPM install did not complete successfully. Well, similar to, I did, to what I did with the terminal case, I can go over here and I can say, hey, let's actually do dagger call minus I build. So I can have an interactive debugging mode. So if something fails, again, like before, I'm dropped into a terminal right at the point of failure. And you can actually, and I can see there's no PMPM here. I could say, well, is there an MPM? Oh yeah, there is. Okay, that was the problem. Let me go fix it in the code, right? So let me get out of this here. So um, going back, you know, the big idea for everybody here is again, that these functions live inside of modules. When you wanna create a new module, it's really, really easy. You just dagger init that module with the SDK of your choice, Go, Python, TypeScript, whatever. And then if you have any dependencies that you wanna pull in, you just dagger install those things. Okay, so I'm gonna actually uh, skip over building that Python module if you, wanna, uh, if you wanna get me afterwards. Essentially, I just grabbed some code from ChatGPT and built a module. It was really, really easy and fast. And you don't have to write everything. We actually have Daggerverse, which is a set of uh, community modules here. And it's an index is the way to think about it. So when people use modules, they show up here. We have some featured ones. But you can find lots and lots of modules for things that you might be interested in doing here. Additionally, let me go ahead and stop this here. Additionally, let's, and this would be, uh, let's, do, let's do one more module, since we're short on time. We'll do one more module. Who's used ngrok here? Okay, so some folks have used ngrok. So the idea is, say you've got a web server running on your laptop, and you want to show it to somebody else who's across the world. Well, with ngrok, you could um, basically expose that via ngrok. And they, they set up a reverse proxy, they have a secure tunnel to your machine, and then some user can come in and actually look at that stuff. It's gonna be really, really handy. What if we could actually look, not just at my laptop, but at something inside Dagger on my laptop? That's the premise of this idea. So let's do it. And I'm gonna go back over here to Hello Dagger. And remember we had, if I run Dagger functions on this thing, I had kind of done a little, a little bit of an extra thing here and, and added a share function. And if we take a look at that really, really quick, you'll see that this is the hello dagger and down here we've got build and all the other things that we're used to, but we also got this share function. And the share function um, is gonna share on port 80 and I'm using a module that I wrote that's an ngrok module. Well, believe me, there's a lot of detail in the ngrok module, but as a consumer of the module, it's easy. I say, hey, dag, give me the ngrok share function and just use it. So let's use it. So here I'm gonna say share, and yeah, it looks good. So I'm actually, um, I need a token, I need an ngrok token. I'm using, we can either use an environment variable, in this case I'm using a command, I'm running one password and getting my uh, token, so I have to authenticate with my fingerprint really quick. So this is gonna grab my ngrok token from my one password, it's gonna run the share function, and it's gonna pull this up. And so what this is doing is actually starting that same Nginx that we've been playing with all this time, right? And it's serving it, and then uh, it threw ngrok, so some, somehow on the internet now. And then locally, I've got, on localhost 4040, I've got the ngrok interface for admin. So now if I go in through here, I should be able to visit this site. No, I don't wanna leave you all out in the cold, so let's actually go over here, and I, in my ngrok module, I actually have with a different API token, a diff, an API token here, I have a way to share out a QR code of that instance. So as a final thing, I encourage you to try and go to that. I'm, I'm hopeful. <laughs> I'm going to go through this way. As you can see, I did it first. I'm going through and looking at this here. And I'm hopeful that some other folks 
are going through as well. And we can see at the top there, you can see all the different folks that are coming through. These are all folks that are connecting through there, all the different user agents. So yeah, I think we have some success. So right now you're talking to a Dagger container that's, on my, that's in the Dagger engine on my laptop, serving up this site that we've been building together uh, for the last 25 minutes. Thank you so much. Awesome. Do we have time for questions? Is that a thing? Or have I used all my time? Dagger JSON? Yeah, absolutely. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut this down just so no intrepid people like sneak into my laptop that way. I don't think, it, I don't think they're gonna do it, but just in case. Three minutes for questions. Okay, awesome. So one question I was just asked is, can we show the Dagger JSON? So here is the project that I've been showing you all. This Hello Dagger. This is the Quick Start project from the docs. So. When I, in the quick start, they tell you to put your Dagger module in the Dagger directory so it's nice and visible. I'm using the default if you just do a Dagger init in here. I did SDK TypeScript, right? It's how I initiated this module. And so what that does is, and, and I actually, because it's an existing project, it went in the dot Dagger directory. That's where my Dagger module is, the implementation. But up at the top level, as you were mentioning, there's a Dagger JSON. So if I cat out the dagger JSON, you can see that my hello dagger module written in TypeScript is using this ngrok module, which I'm get, actually I have kind of vendored in here in this ngrok directory. But if you go in the ngrok module, which is itself a dagger module, and you look at its dagger JSON, remember it knew how to make QR codes. So it was taking advantage of my QR module that I built earlier. Uh, and this one is up on GitHub and it's at a pinned to this particular SHA, right? So yeah, that just kind of gives you a flavor of how these things can go. You just dagger install it and we can take care of all those dependencies in the dagger JSON. Does that help? Is that good? Okay. Another question. Not yet. So the question was, can we get CLI completion for the chain things? That is something that we are working on and uh, you should come into the Dagger community and there's some really cool stuff uh, happening in that area. Any other questions? But of course, I would say, I, sh I would be remiss if I didn't mention, of course, I'm here inside of my editor and of course you get all of the IntelliSense, all of the uh, you know, jump to definition, all the things that you expect because this is really just code, right? I just jumped into the share into the ngrok module right and if you want to get a flavor again if you're interested in this kind of crazy stuff uh, for how this stuff is put together definitely come see me afterwards and uh, i can show you, you know, like all the gory details of you know, this module and i think one thing can underline is we were writing in typescript the main module the ngrok module we used is written in golang again with a very similar you can you know, it's all the same api so everything looks pretty similar and that QR code module, if you'll recall, it was written in Python. So um, again, kind of a fun thing that you can, this is kind of the QR code module right here. This is all written in Python. So that's how you can use any Dagger module with any other Dagger module, regardless of language. Cool, anyone else? All right, thanks so much.